Hello world of YouTube. I am back with the final installment of my Mega Blu-ray collection video. I will be giving away another Blu-ray at the end of this video, so stick around for that. But we will get started right now for you. Our first movie today is going to be Spawn. Um, I wish they would redo this one because I really like this character in comics and uh, you know Todd McFarlane was one of my favorite artists back in the day. So to see this movie redone uh, in a way that uh, with, by today's standards with the special effects would be so much nicer to have than this version. I do like this movie. I thought it was done really well. However, the CGI was absolutely horrible in this one. And um, I just really want to see a remake with this one. I, this is the one that they should remake. Remake it the correct way with the right effects. It would be awesome if they did. Maybe even recast it, you know, with, with some better actors in some ways. I, I didn't like all the actors in this one as much, but still a very fun watch, guys. If you like Spawn at all, I think you'd like this movie if you can just get past the, the bad effects. So I would give this one a 6.5 out of 10. It would have gotten a 7 or 8 if it would have been better with the special effects, but I'm, I'm going to have to dock it a little for that because it's really dated at, on, on this particular movie. So there you are. And then we have our next uh, set of movies is Speed, Broken Arrow, and Entrapment. I really got this only for Speed, uh, the first Speed. I don't like the second Speed at all, but um, that first one's awesome. Uh, Broken Arrow, it's okay, and Entrapment, it's okay. Um, I would give Speed probably an 8 out of 10, Broken Arrow probably a 5 out of 10, and Entrapment maybe a 6 out of 10. Um, so pretty cool set here though. I, I love that it has the first Speed in it. Um, like I said, I'll never own the, the second one. I think it was horrible, um, but this one's a pretty decent one. Next we have Sphere. Uh, this is a Barry Levinson movie um, with uh, Sandra Bullock, Samuel Jackson, Dustin Hoffman, and a couple other people, people you'll recognize. Now guys, this is a thinker. This is a very kind of a slow moving uh, thriller uh, slash drama slash science fiction. Um, it's a thinker and I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I've never seen a movie like it. Um, you have to stick with it. It's, it's kind of creepy and it kind of is like a dark psychological thriller is what it is. Um, you really have to stick with it to, to, to appreciate the, the wonderful um, aspect of this movie. But once you do, I, think, I don't think you'll be um, disappointed that you did. This movie is a 7.5 out of 10. Next is Stand By Me. Um, I loved the kid actors in here. Everybody was, did a great job. And of course, these are, you know, older, this is an older movie, so these are, they were a lot, a lot younger then. Um, I thought this was a pretty good movie. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, I didn't love it, but it was uh, entertaining for the most part. Um, and it was cool seeing all these actors really young like they are here in this movie. So there you go. Next is Stargate. We're going to um, talk about that. So Kurt Russell is in this one um, and James Spader. Um, this could have been a really, really great movie. I think it was still good, but I don't think it was great. Um, it's a movie that you kind of have to stick with. Um, there are moments of greatness and then there's moments of really they could have done so much more with this. Um, but anyway, Stargate, I'd say, is about a 6.5 out of 10. Um, I did enjoy it pretty well. Next is Starship Troopers. This is another Paul Verhoeven movie. Um, he's of course the one who did uh, Showgirls, Robocop, um, Hollow Man, uh, movies such as that. So I really like Starship Troopers. It's probably it's probably going to be my favorite Paul Verhoeven film next to Robocop 1. Um, I thought this was done really cool. It's, it's cheesy, but it's very, uh, at the same time, it's very violent, science fiction oriented, and I really liked this one. This was a really, really fun watch. And this one is, I recommend for anybody that likes action and kind of cheesy, cheesy action as well. Um, it is funny. It has some, some humor as well. But um, this is a great movie, guys. Special effects are kind of a little bit cheesy too, but on par. And they, and they look pretty good, actually. So I can't knock it. I think it looks great. Um, I hated the sequels. Don't ever watch the sequels. But this one is definitely worth your time. I loved it. I give this an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, 8.5 is fine on that one. Next is Star Trek, uh, the reboot. Um, I didn't like the reboot by J.J. Abrams, I'll be honest. I did not like the first one. Um, there was just, I mean, I liked the cast, but I didn't like the movie itself. So that's just kind of my personal opinion. I know a lot of other people out there would disagree with me if they're Trekkies. Uh, I'm a Trekkie, but I just didn't care for this one very much. I would probably give this a 6 out of 10. Um, and moving on to the next sequel, where we had uh, Into Darkness, which was... A lot better than the other one. Um, this one was actually was actually a film I, I can't forget. They brought back someone, and I'm not going to talk tell, tell you who it is, but they brought back someone from a uh, you know an older Star Trek movie, and it really worked. It, it was awesome. It had a cool feel. The acting was great. It was cast great. I mean, this one is the best of the three that came out in this trilogy. So definitely, if you're going to see one of them, see this one. I would give this a 7.5 out of 10. Next, we have Star Trek Beyond which was okay. It was, it was okay. I liked it. It was better than the first one. 
Um, so I probably would give it a 6.5 out of 10. Um, I did like it, but didn't love it on this one. This one's just kind of, it's forgettable, I guess. Next, we're going into my Star Wars movies. I do have the Steelbook versions of uh, all the Star Wars movies, except for some of the, the last ones. But uh, this one's really nice. It's the Darth Maul. This, this hasn't even been opened yet, but this is the Phantom Menace. Um, and it looks great in its, all of its uh, glory. It hasn't even been opened yet. So uh, one of these days, I'll get around to opening it. But I've seen the movie multiple times, so it doesn't really need to be. Next is the Attack of the Clones, of course. Not opened as well. Steelbook version of this. Um, yeah, so I'm a huge Star Wars fan, guys. So... The ones I'm showing you now are just really dear to my heart and my collection. So, Attack of the Clones, by the way, Phantom Menace. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of these these movies, the prequels. I wasn't. I, I'll be honest. The, the originals are where it's at. But the Phantom Menace, I would probably give a 7 out of 10 to. It was pretty good. Um, Attack of the Clones, I'd probably give a 6.5 out of 10. I didn't like it as much. It had some cool moments, and I love the characters in all these Star Wars movies. I, I love the way they look. I love... Uh, I just, yeah, that's... I mean, the character... Whoever did the, the artwork for the characters, uh, hats off. I mean, every character, I collect the figures too. I collect the six inch series. And um, I, I have every single figure in the black series so far. So as you can see, I really do like the, uh, the characters in, the, in these movies. But uh, next is Revenge of the Sith. This is part three. Uh, also the Steelbook version, never opened. Um, I haven't opened it yet. Just I'm just thinking about leaving it in the package for now. I'm not sure. not sure. This is the best of the prequels. I would probably give it a 7.5 out of 10. I, I did like it. Because it's, you know, it's the rise of Vader, and that was pretty cool. Even though I didn't agree with everything they did, it was still a very cool movie. Compared to the other two, it was a little bit better. Um, next is Solo, my, my uh, least favorite Star Wars movie in the whole universe at, at this point. Um, I did not like this one. Um, there were parts of it I thought were okay, but I didn't like it for the most part. I thought it was cast well with Lando. Um, I, you know, seeing Chewbacca and Han meet for the first time was kind of cool, I guess, but I, I don't know. I, I wasn't really into this one. I'd probably give it a 5.5 out of 10. I, I just did, did not like it at all. And I, I didn't like Woody Harrelson in it at all either. And I do like him usually, but not in this one. Sorry, guys. Next is Rogue One, which I thought was the best of all the newer movies they've created so far. This is my favorite one. Um, Rogue One was, was a triumph. It was amazing. Um, Lots of great uh, casting in here. Um, a little bit slow in the beginning, but through the middle and the end, there's a space battle that I argue is probably the best space battle in any Star Wars movie. Um, also, of course, you get you get Vader. He's going to be in here a little while, not not long, but enough. And they really nailed Vader. He, he they did a great job on that. So if you haven't seen Rogue One, which I'm sure you probably have, but if you haven't, this is the one to see of all the new ones. I love the story. I love what they did with it. Um, I would give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Next, we have the classic series, A New Hope on Steelbook. Um, this one is still sealed, and I'll tell you a little secret what's inside there. I actually sealed this myself um, because I just didn't want to get messed up, but um, I have the despecialized edition of Star Wars in here, uh, so this is kind of a keepsake for me. I'm not going to tell you how I got that, but <laughs> I, I do have it, and it's in there, and it's in the same with the other movies, by the way. 10 out of 10, guys. There's no disputing that. Uh, next is uh, The Empire Strikes Back, another 10 out of 10. All these are a 10 out of 10 for me. All the original Star Wars movies are just fabulous. The characters are amazing. The acting was amazing. The story was amazing. It's just perfection in all of its glory. Again, Despecialized Editions inside here. I resealed it for my own liking. And next we have Return of the Jedi. Um, of course, the Steelbook version, uh, sealed and with the Despecialized Edition inside just waiting to be uh, opened up to the air one of these days to be watched once again. Next, we have The Force Awakens, J.J. Uh, Abrams' reboot to the Skywalker Saga, and I was not a huge fan of this series, especially the last two. This one is the best one of the three. Um, I would probably give this one a 7 out of 10. Um, it was entertaining, and it had a good um, direction it started to go, but then it kind of fell apart. But... Uh, yeah, and I think everybody would agree with me on that for the most part. Um, ne next is The Last Jedi. Whew, yeah, I didn't like this movie um, as much. Uh, it, was, it was entertaining. I'd probably give it a 6.5 out of 10. It did have some cool parts in it. I love when they fight the Praetorian Guards. I love the ending sequence. It was awesome. Everything else was just, eh. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything amazing. So that's what you get with Last Jedi. Next we have the 4K version of uh, Rise of Skywalker right here. Um, and I really, really wanted to like this movie. Um, I really wanted to. But the story and the, the fact that there's no arc in it of any of the characters was just absolutely wretched. I think this movie was a failed attempt at bringing back 
the failed attempt of The Last Jedi. And I'm sorry, a lot of people disagree with me, but I, I don't care because I know I'm right. <laughs> I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I've been a Star Wars fan, you know, since I've been born. I was born in 77 when it came out. And this was a complete letdown. Entertaining, I'll give it that. And I love the characters. I mean, again, I love the characters in Star Wars. And I collect them all. But the movie itself was pretty much trash compared to the other ones. Um, I would probably give this one... A 6.5 as well. Um, it, it was entertaining, but it wasn't great at all, and I was completely let down. I mean, going from 10 to 6.5, that's pretty bad, guys. So, I don't know. Disney, wake up a little bit on that one. Next, we have Stay Tuned. This was a really cool movie. It's a rare one um, with John Ritter, and I love it. Um, it's It kind of reminds me of, of being a kid again, because I watched this when I was a kid, and I, and I loved it then. Um, I, it's rare. It's, it's hard to find, especially on Blu-ray. Um, I think it might even be out of print at this point, but I love this movie. It's great, guys. I would give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Next, we have Stripes with Bill Murray. I just watched this one recently. Um, it's it's really good. It's actually a little bit better than I remember. So, um, yeah, definitely a funny comedy, a little bit risque, of course. Uh, does have some nudity and some language, but it's it's a really fun, funny movie. And it's, it's just one of those older movies you have to see. I mean, Harold Ramis, John Candy's in it. There's some, name, there's some faces that you'll definitely recognize. So pick up Stripes if you have a chance. Um, and I think you'll, you'll get a good chuckle out of it. Next, we have a rare title called The Stuff. Now, this is an Arrow release and a film by Larry Cohen. And um, it's a very acquired taste. Get it? <laughs> the Stuff is an acquired taste also, I guess. But um, this movie is out there, guys. It's really strange, but I got it because I remember it when I was a kid. I watched it, and it left an impression on me. And I feel that movies that do that should be noted and should be um, collected. So this is one I, I decided I'd get because, and it was expensive. I think I paid like 40 bucks for this thing. But um, it's worth it to me. I love this movie. Um, you might not. It's an older 80s movie. It might even be 70s, actually. Um, let's see. Nah, there's no, there's no date on it. I see. That's okay. Um, it, it's, it's, it's like it's got to be eighties or seventies or eighties somewhere in there. But it was good, guys. It was, it was cool if you like, you know, hokey horror films. I guess is what you call that one. So stuff. I would give that one a six point five out of ten. Next we have Sunshine. Um, this one is a Danny Boyle film. Um, he's the one who did Twenty Eight Days Later with the zombies. Um, this one is a, a good movie. I liked it. Uh, very slow. Very slow but had a really cool story, had a twist. Um, it has a uh, Captain America dude, I can't remember his name. Chris something maybe, I, I don't remember. Um, but um, gosh, the acting in this was great. Um, the guy who played the Scarecrow in Batman Begins is, is also the front man in this one. This is a cool movie, guys. If you like space exploration type movies, I really think you'll like this one. And the twist is just kind of a cool little added feature they added on, but really cool build up. Uh, realism is very, very close to uh, to reality until the end, but um, it's it was a cool movie. It's definitely worth the see, guys. I would give this one a 6.5 out of 10 as well. Next, we have Taken, the first Taken with Liam Neeson, and uh, this one is uh, really good. It was done well. It was kind of original, an original action for its time. I have the slipcover, as you can see. Um, I liked it. I thought it was good. It was it was fun. It was entertaining. Um, I would probably give this a 6.5 out of 10 as well. Moving right on into the next stack, we're going to show you Taken 2 with Liam Neeson. This is the uh, unrated version and the theatrical cut of the movie. Um, it was not quite as good as the first one. Um, it seemed like it was a little bit more violent and pretty much the same premise. So I wasn't uh, as thrilled with this one. I'd give, probably give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Um, however, you know, if, if you like the same thing watching it over again, then that's pretty much what happens. So, um, no spoilers. I mean, that's, that's just the gist of the, of the movie. So moving on to the next one, we have Taken 3, and this was a much better, um, sequel. I think that the story was better. Um, it kind of went down a road that I didn't think it would, so that was good. I, I didn't want to see the same thing again, so it was good. Um, definitely worth watching a 7 out of 10 on this particular one here. It does have a PG-13 and an unrated version of that one, uh, as well. And then... Next is uh, Talladega Nights with Will Ferrell and uh, John C. Riley, um, and then dude that played Borat. I can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, good stuff, guys. This is the unrated and uncut version. Um, this is pretty funny stuff. If you like race car movies with, with a lot of over-the-top slapstick type comedy almost, that's what you're going to get here. Um, it's I was rolling laughing watching this, guys. It was really funny. Definitely worth a see. Um, I would give this one a 7 out of 10. Next, we have The Theory of Everything. And this is a great um, 
inspirational uh, true story about uh, Mr. Stephen Hawking, or Hawkins, I believe is how you say that. Um, really cool. Um, this Eddie uh, R Redmayne, I believe is his name, he did an amazing job. Um, really played the part well, and Felicity Jones did a great job portraying his, his wife as well. So definitely worth a watch, guys. This is a fantastic movie. Um, I really had a good time with this, with this one, and I would give this one. It's, it's, it's a lot of hard drama, but if you're ready for that, it's a 7.5 out of 10. Next, we have The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. And I'm a big fan of Carpenter movies, so The Thing is one of my favorites by him. Um, it was just um, intense for its time. Um, it was, uh, had Kurt Russell in it. I like Kurt Russell. It was just a lot of good things uh, with this movie. It was fantastic. One of Carpenter's best. Um, definitely worth a watch. Um, in the freezing weather, they come across the alien, of course, that uh, mimics other uh, people. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, it was an older movie, but it was done really, really well. I definitely re recommend this one. This is a 7.5 out of 10. Next, I have That Thing You Do with Tom Hanks and uh, has the music of Fountains of Wayne um, in this movie. Um, however, the singer for Howlin's Fountains of Wayne just passed away um, with COVID-19, actually. And um, just thought uh, you might want to know as a side point there with this movie that he's the one who did the music in this movie. And without him, this movie kind of wouldn't exist. Even Tom Hanks mentioned that, I think, once in one of the interviews he had recently. So um, pretty sad stuff. But this movie is really a happy movie, and it's one we should you should definitely see. Um, I highly recommend this. I love musical movies. This one had, had a Beatles-esque type of feel to it and was done spectacularly. I loved this movie all the way through. I would give this an 8.5 out of 10. Next we have This Means War with Reese Witherspoon, Chris Pine, and Tom Hardy. And um, this was a mixed bag for me. I liked it a lot, actually, but um, it was rated PG-13. I believe there was an unrated version. Um, yeah, I, was, I thought it was R because it was pretty risque in a couple spots. So I was thinking it was an R, but I guess it's not. Um, it's PG-13 or an unrated version if you choose to watch that one. Um, but it was good. Um, like I said, it's, it's kind of one that just, I guess, I guess it grows on you after a while. Um, so it's, it's pretty decent to watch. I would give this one a 6.5 6 out of 10 on that. Next we have a uh, slipcover Titanic 3D edition. Um, you know, this was, this was a monument in filmmaking. I, I think that it was great. Um, James Cameron decided to, to kind of focus in on a love story here, which is okay because he did it really well. Um, he also tried to tell you know, a pretty historical, historically accurate account of you know, the Titanic and its sail, which was cool. I thought it was um, done really well with the acting, uh, everything, the directing, everything was done really, really well in this. Uh, if you don't mind a love story intertwined with some of the facts from the Titanic, then um, that's what you're getting here. Um, there's also a couple spots that are not that are you know Hollywood uh, oriented that are not that did not happen. Um, I think one of them had to deal with the last part of the movie with the jewel. Um, I can't remember the, the name of the jewel. Anyway, so um, yeah, it's it's a good movie, guys. I mean, obviously James Cameron is an amazing director. Leonardo DiCaprio is an amazing actor. It was just, it was really, really good. If you haven't seen Titanic, it's like a three-hour movie, so brace yourself for that. But definitely, definitely worth your time on this one. I really liked it. I would give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Next, we have Tombstone. I liked this one a lot, too. Um, just about as much uh, as uh, Wyatt Earp, which is the other movie I'm going to talk about later. Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer. Oh, man, such a great lineup in here, guys. Um, and this was really intense, good Western movie. If you, if you like Westerns even a little bit, I think you'd like this one. So definitely pick it up if you haven't seen it yet. It's definitely worth your time. I would give this a 7.5. Next, we have Total Recall, the original with Schwarzenegger. The new one's horrible. So if you're going to watch a Total Recall, please watch this one, and you'll see it in all its 80s glory. <laughs> it's, it is dated a bit, but it's, it's still a really fun movie. And, uh, I mean, what could be, what could be cooler than, than being on Mars with Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So check this out. I would give this a 7 out of 10. Next we have Touchback uh, with Kurt Russell again. Um, this was a good um, kind of a science fiction drama slash love story. Um, yeah, I guess that's what you'd call it. It, it, was, it was good, guys. It was, um, it was a good movie. Very slow, so you kind of have to stick with it. Um, I would probably give it a 6 out of 10. I didn't absolutely love it, but it was a good movie, and it's worth your time if you happen to find it at a pawn shop. They're fairly cheap for these ones here now. Um, Trading Place is our next movie here with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. I do have the slipcover for that, and, of course, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis as well, looking uh, better than she ever has in this movie for sure. Um, that She was younger, you know, <laughs> so a little bit more perky, I guess. Um, so, Trading Places, guys, fantastic comedy all the way through. The dialogue was great. 
Um, great acting, uh, just really well done. Risque, definitely risque. You know, this is for adults. This is an adult comedy, but it was um, really well done, um, and I loved it. I would give Trading Places an eight out of ten. It was it was that good. Next we have Training Day, which is one of my favorite Denzel Washington movies. Also, my my boy Ethan Hawke. I love that guy. Too. He's such a great actor, and he really uh, did an excellent job in this one. And Denzel did a great job of, of being the bad guy, too. So, guys, if you haven't seen Training Day, this this is a must-see for any action fans, for anybody who likes Denzel and Ethan Hawke. you got to see this one. It's fantastic. It's pretty hardcore. I liked it a lot. I would give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Next, we have uh, the only Transformers movie that I own, uh, which is the second one. This one is uh, Revenge of the Fallen. And I don't have the slipcover or anything for it, but um, what this movie is, um, what I liked most about it is because it had a lot of robot battles, which I wanted to see in the first one and I didn't get as much of. Um, other than that, the movie's pretty much trash. So I'll be honest, I, I don't like any of the Transformer movies. Even the first one wasn't that great. So I would probably give this a 6 out of 10, if not only for the action scenes between the, the, the robots that was, you know, finally some, some gave me some action instead of just stupid dialogue and... Uh, I hated the way they revamped the Transformers. I think they should have kept the original form. I, I just didn't like it, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, I think this is a Michael Bay film as well, but I'm, I'm not a huge Michael Bay fan. There's been a couple winners he's done, but this isn't one of them. Uh, that would probably be a six. Uh, next, we're moving on to Troy with Brad Pitt. And Orlando Bloom is in this as well. Um, this was a classic, guys. Um, obviously, it's not accurate historically, I'm sure, but it was a classic. It was a really fun, good movie. And it's definitely worth your time. Um, had a lot of uh, intense moments, and like I said, I, I highly recommend Troy. Um, it's a great watch. I would give this one a 7.5. Next we have True Grit, um, which was a great uh, remake of the original True Grit. Uh, I think this one was probably even better with Jeff Bridges, Matt Damon, and Josh Brolin. Um, really, really good, guys. Uh, really good Western. I, I recommend it highly. Um, I would say this is probably a 6.5 out of 10. Um, almost a 7, but 6.5 is probably what I'd, where I'd stay on this one. But True Grit, the remake is better than the original as far as I'm concerned. Next we have The Truman Show, which is kind of a rare one at this point. Um, they're going for about, I think, around 15 to 20 bucks or more online now. Um, but uh, Jim Carrey, one of Jim Carrey's best roles, you know, as a dramatic, thematic movie um, goes, he did a great job in this one. And uh, they waited to, pr to put this one to produ into production for just long enough so that he would do the part. And I'm so glad that they did. They could have had another actor do it, and I can't remember who, who he was. But um, I, I'd much rather have seen Jim, Jim Carrey in the role. So, guys, Truman Show, f fabulous movie. I would give this an 8 out of 10. Next, we have um, The Twister. Um, this one is not one of my favorites, uh, but Bill Paxton is a good actor. I do like him. Helen Hunt. She's okay in a couple of movies I've seen her in. My favorite movie with Helen Hunt is called Kiss of Death. It's one that, um, you, want, that you will not find on Blu-ray. Um, you can find it on, on DVD, but it's tough to find. It's pretty rare. But if you ever get a chance to watch Kiss of Death with Helen Hunt, you should see that. It has David Caruso in it as well. Um, and it's really, really good. Um, this one is, um, oh, it also has a Nicolas Cage. I didn't even mention that, but uh, Cage plays a bad guy in Kiss of Death. But this one here, it's, um, you know, it's a disaster movie, but it's, it's silly. It, it, it just has nostalgia to me, and that's the only reason I own this. I would probably give this a 6 out of 10, to be honest. Next, we have UHF, which is fairly rare. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic movie from the 80s, 25th anniversary, or 25th anniversary edition. And this is a classic. It's a Shout Factory one. It's, it's rare. You can't find it anymore. Um, and it's a fabulous, like, I don't know how to, how to put it. It reminds me a little bit of Amazon Women on the Moon, if you've ever seen that old 80s movie. Um, it's not nearly as risque as that one, but it, it reminds me of that one, and I loved it. I think, I think Riddell did a great job in all his parts. Great, fun movie. I'd give that a 7 out of 10. Next, we have Unbreakable, which is my favorite of all time M. Night uh, Shyamalan movies. Uh, this one is the first in the trilogy of three, of course. Uh, Split is the second one, and Glass would be the third. I've already reviewed those a bit with you. But Unbreakable was a fabulous movie um, all the way. I loved it. It was slow, but slow for a reason, and really uh, almost like a psychological drama. That's what I would call this one. Um, and there's a little bit more to it, too, a twist, of course. If you haven't watched this yet, I won't talk about it. But dang, that's a good movie. I would give that an 8 out of 10. We shall now embark upon the last stack of our regular Blu-ray collection. Um, next, we're going to get into the box sets, and then after that, I'll probably do either DC or Marvel. 
uh, maybe some TV series as well for you. And then after all of that, I think I might do a update video because I've gotten some new movies that aren't in this collection yet. And we'll go over those with you as well um, on a later video. So next is Unstoppable with Denzel Washington, Chris Pine. This was based on a true story and it was very good, uh, very entertaining, uh, high adrenaline, good movie guys, definitely worth seeing. I loved, uh, I loved both characters quite a bit in this one. They did a great job portraying the, uh, the people who had to stop that train. So cool movie, I really liked it. Um, I would give that a 7 out of 10. Next we have Vacation with Chevy Chase. Uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, that is. That's the very first one. Um, it's a classic. It really is. It's funny. It's, it's good. My favorite is still The Christmas Vacation, but this one is great. It's worth a watch. Um, I'd probably give this about a 6.5 out of 10. Next we have your European Vacation. I didn't like this one very much, to be honest with you. And it's a little bit risque for a PG-13, I thought. Um, so I would give this one about a 6, six, yeah, six out of 10. Sounds good. Uh, I didn't love it, but I did like it. It was okay. Uh, not as good as the others, though. Next, we have Valerian. This is the 4K Ultra uh, HD version. Uh, cool uh, slip cover on that one right there. Um, I really didn't like this movie, to be honest, too much. I thought it was okay, but I think that the special effects were, were really good. I think they, they were stellar. Uh, great job, and that's why I have it in 4K, because I wanted to see those special effects with the, with the uh, 4K treatment, and it was, it was really cool, guys. Definitely um, better on 4K than, than on the Blu-ray version, uh, but both are pretty good, and 4K is where it's at, though, with this one. I would give this a 6.5 out of 10. Next, we have Ben Helsing with uh, Kate Beckinsale and Hugh Jackman, um, and this is just kind of a guilty pleasure werewolf slash vampire movie that I like. Um, I don't love it, but it's, it was a fun watch, and Hugh Jackman always is good with most, most of the things he's in is, is pretty good. Kate Beckinsale is always awesome in these types of movies. I loved her in Underworld. Uh, we'll go over those later in a, in a different video, but yeah, fantastic. Uh, good, good, good watch here. I would give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Next, we have a series of movies that are very controversial and strange. VHS. Um, yeah, th these are horror movies. Horror slash shocker slash thriller movies. And they're very low budget, they're by Magnet, and um, they're not extremely rare to find, but they are um, kind of a cult following classic, I think. Um, I, I think. I think that they're interesting. Um, I don't necessarily recommend these for anyone because they're pretty crazy. They're very, um, like a shocking, shocking type of movie. They're just very explicit, very crazy movies. And this one is okay. I think that the second one's the best one. Um, but this one was okay. I'd give, probably give this one about a 6 out of 10. Next, we have a, a VHS 2. This is the best one of the three that they've done. Um, this is my another guilty pleasure of mine. Very shocking movie. I can't believe this only has an R rating. but Because, I mean, it's intense, and it's just over-the-top crazy. So I don't understand how it got away with just the R rating. But it did, and um, <laughs> here we are talking about it. So very, like I said, very shocking. There's, there's a couple of things in here that really interesting how they did it. I mean, they gave you the perspective of a zombie from a GoPro, basically. And when, when a, you know, when a normal person gets bitten by a zombie, turns into a zombie, and then he goes on a feeding frenzy himself with his GoPro on. I mean, <laughs> when, we, when will you ever see a movie like that other than VHS2? And there's another uh, a segment as well about a, an underground cult. And it is insane. It gets really, really insane very quickly. So I did like this one, though. I mean, just for shock value and, and originality, I'd give it a 7. But as a movie, I'd recommend to anybody. I really wouldn't because not a lot of people could handle this one. Next is VHS Viral. And it was the third in the series thus far. Um, that's actually rips. That's not how the cover's supposed to look. That's, that's like punctured right there. Anyway... Um, I got this one at a pawn shop, and I thought it was the second best of the three, to be honest. Um, there's some really good segments with The Magician and some other ones in here, but um, as a whole, I didn't love this one. I think it gets about a 6.5 out of 10, um, but uh, VHS 2 is really the one you want to see. Next is Village of the Damned. I haven't opened this yet, but I have seen it. I love it. Christopher Reeve, Kirstie Alley's in this one. It's a John Carpenter movie, and he, he nailed it with this uh, remake of Village of the Damned. I really liked this one. I thought it was done so well. I love Christopher Reeve, too, and he's not in a ton of movies because he's not alive anymore, but it's just one of those movies that's kind of eerie, and I, I really like the feel. It, it really captured the, the, the evil feel of the, of the children just perfectly on this one. I give Village of the Damned a 7 out of 10. Next, we have Virtuosity uh, with Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington. An older movie, probably one you haven't heard of often, but it's actually worth a watch. It's dated on the effects. I'll, I'll say that about it, that the special effects are dated. Uh, I think it's a 90s movie, early 90s movie, but I did like it still, and it was a really fun, uh, high-adrenaline, 
uh, you know, chase type of movie um, slash science fiction. It was it was good. It was worth it was worth watching. I give it a six point five out of ten. Next is Walk the Line, the story of uh, Johnny Cash, with Reese Witherspoon and Joaquin Phoenix, and um, it's a great movie. It's a it's a good rendition of Johnny Cash's uh, life. I think that Joaquin actually sang his parts in this, which made it even better to me. It was it was just really cool. It was a great movie, uh, great drama, uh, musical uh, movie, and I, I think it's I, I think it's a uh, Probably going to be about a 7.5 out of 10 for this one on me. Now, <laughs> that this is this this is the uh, the spoof of that last one we just looked at. But guys, one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Extremely explicit, extremely offensive, but one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. It's a 10 out of 10 on this this one. Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story. Uh, that's yeah, amazing, guys. I I can I can vouch for this that other people have seen this and agree with me that it's one of the best comedies ever. And you should definitely see this if you're not offended by things. Um, you know, mostly sexual content and, and language is what's in here. But wow, blew me away. John C. Riley knocked it out of the park as you know, as uh, playing that role. And, and guys, you just gotta see. It. I can't say anything else about it because you gotta see this for yourself. Definitely a 10 out of 10. Next is Warm Bodies. Um, this is the the uh, movie that pays homage to uh, zombies and their love for the human race a little bit. Um, <laughs> kind of a strange movie, but it was actually done pretty well. I, I actually kind of enjoyed myself watching this. And uh, the acting was pretty good. John Malkovich is even in this movie. So um, it's definitely one to see, and I recommend it for anybody that likes uh, love stories slash horror zombie movies, I guess, right? So I would give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Next we have Water for Elephants. This is a great drama uh, about uh, the circus. It has one of my favorite actors right here. It's Christopher Waltz. Um, Reese Witherspoon and um, uh, Robert Pattinson, the new Batman, um, and it was really done well. The choreography was amazing in this one, really uh, well acted, um, kind of slow to get off the ground a bit, but once it gets off the ground, it, you really got to watch to the end. It's a little bit uh, cringy in a couple spots, you'll know what I mean, but it's still good and worth a see. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Next we have Wayne's World, the original Wayne's World. I haven't opened this copy yet, but these ones are timeless classics, comedies, Mike Myers, Dana Harvey. I loved it, guys. This, this is right up my alley with the type of music I listen to, too. So it just, it really worked. Tia Career never looked better in this movie, and she sang, she sang the songs as well. Um, so definitely a must-see if you haven't seen it. Wayne's World's a classic. Uh, a little bit risque in a couple spots, but you know what? Mike Myers movie isn't. <laughs> I give Wayne's World a 7.5 out of 10. We have the sequel, Wayne's World 2. I would give a 7 out of 10 too. Didn't quite like it as much as the first one, but it was still good. Um, but very well done again. Um, very entertaining. And Tia's in this one as well. Looking even better than before, I think. And uh, <laughs> it's it's funny as heck, guys. You'll laugh, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll hurl, right? Okay. Next one is going to be The Wedding Singer with Adam Sandler. And one of his better uh, comedies, and Drew Barrymore happened to be with him on this one as well. Um, it's a good comedy. I, I, it's, a, it's a memorable, classic comedy that will always be in my heart. And it's a, it's a love story as well, but it's mostly revolving around comedy. And it's a great one. It's a good watch, guys. Um, very little. Well, there's, there's some things in here that are, that are risque, too. But it's PG-13 for a reason, so be mindful of that. But I give The Wedding Singer a 7 out of 10. Next, we have a triple set here. This is The Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, and Weird Science. Weird Science is the reason I got this one. I actually walked, watched The Breakfast Club, and I wasn't a huge fan of it. It was okay. 16 Candles was actually a little bit better than The Breakfast Club, I thought. Um, and then Weird Science was my favorite one on here. So Weird Science, I'd give probably a 6.5 to. I didn't love it, but it, it was good. 16 Candles, maybe a 6. And then The Breakfast Club, maybe a 5.5. Kind of just diminished as it went down there. Um, but they're still decent movies. And if you like 80s style uh, comedies or dramas, then you'll probably like these. So uh, yeah, there you go. Pretty decent movies. Not great, but okay. Willow, guys. This is a rare one. Um, I think it might be out of print. I, I don't have the slipcover uh, for this particular one. But it's a film by Ron Howard and George Lucas. And this is a classic, um, you know, almost like a beginning to the Lord of the Rings style movies that I've come across. And Willow is uh, fantastic. It's got Val Kilmer, um, dude that played Wick, uh, Wicket, uh, ah, Warwick Davis, that's his name. And he also played the Leprechaun in the Leprechaun movies. But um, guys, if you haven't seen Willow, it's a must-see for fantasy. Amazing movie. I give this an 8.5 out of 10. Next we have Witchboard. This is the first Witchboard. Don't ever watch the sequels because they're pretty bad. Um, there's one called Witchboard The Possession that was actually pretty good. Um, pretty risque, but um, 
but very good still at the same time. This one's still the best Switchboard movie though altogether. Uh, Malfader, uh, never forget. <laughs> it's it's good stuff. She she played an amazing role. She did a great great job acting in this one. I love the uh, the little psychic humor humor she had in the movie. And it's a Scream Factory, guys. So this is rare. This is this is one you're not going to see a lot. Um, but it's a great movie. I recommend this for anybody who likes you know older horror. Uh, thriller type movies. Um, I would give this an 8 out of 10. I loved it. It was a great movie. Next we have Whiplash. And uh, Whiplash is one of the better musical movies I've seen in a long time. Um, it does have uh, J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller. Um, basically it's b about a, uh, a student who is trying to um, basically be the best drummer he can possibly be under his tutelage. So um, that's what's going on in this movie. It gets pretty nuts verbally uh, in this movie. So if you're not, if, if you're offended by language, definitely don't watch it. But um, it's a great, uh, intense movie. Even though it's a drama, it's still intense, which is really cool about this one. So I recommend this for anybody who is into those types of movies. I would give this an 8 out of 10. It was fabulous. Next is The Wolf of Wall Street. And gosh, I loved this movie. It was just so intense, so so risque, so everything. Um, Morton Morton Strasegi does this one, and he blows it he blows it away with this one, guys. This is a great great movie. Leonardo DiCaprio is on his game in this one. Um, yeah, guys, if you don't mind, uh, this I think this holds the record for the most f words in any movie. It was over four hundred times that they said the f word in this movie. So I mean, it's insane when it comes to language, when it comes to sexual situations, nudity. It has it all. It has it all. Drugs. Everything is in this one. But it is very, very entertaining. Margot Robbie stars as his girlfriend uh, for a little while. And uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, as you can see, there's, what's, there's the reason it's R right there. Pretty much a book of reasons. So just like I said, be ready. If you're, if you're going to be offended, do not watch this. I really feel it should have gotten an N17, NC-17, to be honest. It was worse than the, the movie, other movie I talked about, Orgasmo. So... Yeah, guys, it's out there. Be ready. But it's also fabulously done. Very entertaining movie. I would give this an 8.5 out of 10. Next, we have Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp is the uh, the answer to Tombstone. It actually came before Tombstone. I Actually, uh, no, that's not correct. This one came after Tombstone. But Kevin Costner and Dennis Quaid, Gene Hackman was in this. So a killer lineup. Great Western. It was done very well. It got the PG-13 rating. However, I feel that this one was kind of closer to the R rating than Tombstone, even in some ways. So be your own judge. But Wyatt Earp was great. It was a really fun watch. I would give it a 7 out of 10. Next, we have Wrong Turn. Um, I don't love this movie at all, guys. I really don't. I'm not a huge Wrong Turn fan. This is the only Wrong Turn movie I own because the rest were absolute garbage, all of them. Um, this one's the best one. It has Alicia, Elisa, I can't remember her last name, but just Dushku or Dushku, I think. Um, it was really good, um, and I think that um, it's a good thriller, and it's a, it's a good thriller horror. Um, this one came out pretty well, but the other ones are absolute trash. Don't even waste your time. Again, this one's not a great movie, but it was, it was watchable. It's a 6 out of 10. Next, we have another Danny Boyle film called Yesterday. He's the one who did Sunshine as well um, and Slumdog Millionaire. So this is awesome because it takes place um, in the world of, of Beatles music, and um, basically makes a star out of a nobody uh, based around Beatles music. And you'll see what I mean. I'm not going to give away the premise. I do have the slipcover for it as well. Um, it's, it's a great movie, guys. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch. A little slow and a little kind of... You just kind of have to stick with it. But it definitely picks up. And it's definitely a movie worth seeing. I think that um, if you like music at all or if you like the Beatles at all, you'll probably think this movie was at least decent. I would give this a 7 out of 10. I liked it. Next we have... Young Guns, the first Young Guns. This is a great Western. It's a classic Western. You have to have this in your collection. I think Emilio Estevez and the, the cast, Charlie Sheen, uh, Keith, or, Keith or Sutherland, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. I mean, there were some great people in here, uh, great actors, uh, and they really play the roles well. Um, it's the story of Billy the Kid, guys. I mean, it's, it's a cool Western story. So this is definitely a, a great movie. I recommend it for most people who like Westerns. I give it a 7 out of 10. The next one is Young Guns 2, which is rare, and I think it's out of print now on Blu-ray. Um, but I think that I like the first one a little bit better, but the second one is fantastic as well. Um, I probably would give this one a 7 out of 10 because I really did like it and appreciate it, and they did a great job with it. Bon Jovi did the soundtrack on it. I mean, it just came out awesome, so great movie, guys. It's, it's one you should see. Um, that's the last one today I have for you. Again, uh, I'm going to go over that trivia now with you to uh, decide what, who wins my next uh, video.
Okay, guys, it's giveaway time, as I promised, and I have some uh, trivia here for you that if you can answer that I will give you this right here, this awesome copy of T2 Judgment Day. Um, if you don't have this in your collection yet, you shame on you. You need to have it in your collection. So this is why I'm giving it away, just in case someone doesn't happen to have the second one. Um, I'm giving this away to you now if you can answer my, my trivia question. My question to you today is which movie that stars Keanu Reeves had a, a lawsuit against it for the artwork it depicted in the movie. I'm not going to tell you any more than that. Um, if you can come up with the right answer for me, tell me in the comments below and I will send you this movie. Uh, also, I'll give you my email address so that you can email me and give me your information so I can get it to you free of charge, of course. Um, but if you can answer that for me, that'd be awesome. Stay tuned, guys. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming up. I'm going to have, uh, of course, my box sets, my um, Marvel, my DC stuff. Yes, and I do have the animated universe as well in DC. So stay tuned for that. I do have some TV box sets that we'll go over with you as well. But I can't wait to see you guys again. Thanks so much for sticking with me on all this, and peace out.